But to start the show tonight, let's look at how the election is going and who is going to win. Today, the Prime Minister held his campaign launch in Brisbane six days out from polling day. John Howard and Tony Abbott were there to support the PM. The most recent Liberal Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, was absent, not a surprise. Morrison's major policy announcement today, and it is major, is unlocking superannuation for first home buyers. This policy allows young people to take money out of their super to help them buy their own home, to help them enter the property market, and then when they sell the house, they reinvest it in their super. A re-elected coalition government will allow first home buyers to invest a responsible portion of their own superannuation savings into their first home. This would apply to both new and existing homes, and whatever amount is invested will be returned to your super when you sell the home, including the share of the capital gain from the sale of that home. The maximum amount able to be invested under this plan is the lower of 50,000 each individual or 40% of your total superannuation balance. So as you just heard their homeowners will need to have saved 5% themselves and they can then access up to 40% of, of their super or up to $50,000 to help them buy their first home. No cap on the house price. It's not mean tested. Anyone can access their super up to 50k if you're a first home buyer. The government says this will allow young people to use their money when they need it to buy a home without ultimately de diminishing their super contribution because, as I said, when they sell their home, they put that same amount back into their super. The scheme would start in July 2023 if the government is re-elected. This is something that the federal government has been talking about and considering for years now. Morrison, when he was treasurer, looked closely at this and we reported on it at the time in the Daily Telegraph. It's one policy. We've seen a lot of Me Too from Labor this election, matching everything, but this is one policy Labor won't be matching. Returning to the Liberals' campaign launch today, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg rammed home Albanese's failings on the economy once again. In an election about jobs, Anthony Albanese doesn't know the unemployment rate. In an election about cost of living, he doesn't know the cash rate. In the final week before polling day, we've seen the Prime Minister promising to reset while Labor is feeling very confident, almost the same as at the last election. Morrison's final pitch to undecided voters is that he can change. He said he knows he didn't seem empathetic during the COVID crisis. He said it was because he was in problem-solving mode. It was an unusual tactic and Potentially not a great one because it took the focus off Albanese's character and back onto the PM's character. The reason he did it is in a final attempt to win over the undecided voters. And, and that's who his message was meant for. It's based on the hesitation by these soft voters that they don't necessarily like Albanese, but they want the Prime Minister to be more conciliatory. It gives them permission to vote for him again. And that was the reason, that was the strategy, the reason behind those comments. The fact Morrison is making this pitch a week out shows that Labor's main campaign strategy of trying to define this election as a referendum on his character has been successful. This has been going on, as we know, for a couple of years now, since the bushfires. And Morrison and the government has been fairly late to return fire They've only this campaign started to attack and try to define Albanese as incompetent. Meanwhile, Labor in Queensland rolled out Kevin Rudd again. In the most remarkable attempted political con job I've seen in my long political career, Morrison is actually saying this, vote for me and I promise to have a personality change. Rudd speaking about political con jobs. Well, there's no comment on that that our lawyers would allow through. But Labor is feeling very confident about winning the election. You only have to listen to what Labor's Murray Watts said today on Sky News about how Labor is very confident of getting to majority government. 
I'm confident that we can gain the trust of enough Australians to form a, a, a healthy majority. I'm pretty confident that in the end we'll get there in those seats and, and in fact that we'll hold every seat around the country. Everywhere I've gone, there's, you can definitely feel that there is a mood for change. You know that the media has this view as well and is quite broadly predicting a Labor win, saying the government doesn't have a chance. But how accurate is this view? Let's look at the seats that will determine this election and how they're falling at the moment a week out. The Morrison government is likely to lose these seven seats. So these are the seven seats the government is at high risk of losing. Reid in New South Wales, North Sydney in New South Wales, Benelong in New South Wales, Bass in Tasmania, Boothby in South Australia, Leichhardt and Longman in Queensland. So the government is facing the very likely loss of three seats in New South Wales, a couple in Queensland, one in Tasmania and, and Boothby in South Australia. That's Labor potentially picking up around five or six seats, six seats from the government and one would go to an independent in North Sydney. But the Morrison government has a high chance of winning eight seats. These are the seats Labor is likely to lose and that the government will probably win. Gilmore and Hughes and Parramatta in New South Wales. Corangamite and McEwen in Victoria. Lyons in Tasmania. Blair in Queensland. And Lingiari in the Northern Territory. So the government is very likely to lose about seven seats, six of them to Labor, and very likely to win eight seats, seven from Labor. And of course, you know, Hughes is included in that list and that's held by Craig Kelly, who was with the Liberals but isn't anymore. If this plays out how I've just outlined, this would put the government one seat ahead of where it is now. But there are some other seats, of course, that are in play for both Labor and the government. These are the next seven seats that the government could lose, but it's a lower chance of a loss. Only three of them would be wins for Labor and four would be wins for the independents. So here you're looking at the lower chance of loss for the government, but possible losses. Swan in WA, Kuyong and Goldstein in Victoria, Wentworth, McKellar in New South Wales, Brisbane in Queensland and Braddon in Tasmania. The government is expecting it'll hold on to these seats, but a loss is possible. And as I mentioned a moment ago, Dave Sharma will be on the show in a moment to talk about how his campaign is going in Wentworth against the independent Allegra Spender. So to be clear, overall, four or five of the seats where the government is at risk of losing are against the independents, not against Labor. And this is very telling. Now, here are the seats where the government could still pull off a win against Labor, although it's a lower chance. Dobell in New South Wales, Macquarie in New South Wales, Solomon in the Northern Territory and Cowan and Pearce in WA. Also there, Dunkley in Victoria. So those are possible chances of the government winning, but not as much as the seats I outlined earlier. Then there are four seats where there is a very remote chance of a win for the government, but there is expected to be a massive swing against Labor in these seats, although Labor will probably still win them. These four seats are Hunter, Werriwa, Fowler and Morton. Now, the reason there's such a big swing against uh, Labor and the Hunter is, of course, because of coal and climate change. In Fowler, this is because Christina Keneally is now running in the seat and she's so unpopular. This is a very safe Labor seat. And even though they're probably going to retain it, it is going to be an ugly win. It should be a reality check for the ALP about how unpopular the former New South Wales Premier is. So let's recap. Out of all of this, what does this mean? Who will win the election? Looking at the figures I've just shown you, the government is facing losing seven seats but could pick up eight seats. If this, if this plays out how I've outlined, Scott Morrison will win the election with a minority government of 74 seats. He could even get to 76 seats. At 74 seats, he would need Bob Catter and Rebecca Sharkey's support to govern in minority. Now, Labor does have a pathway to victory. In my view, it's much harder for Albanese to get there.
It's more difficult because he's coming from behind, starting at 69 seats. So Labor needs to pick up all of the seats I've just outlined and not lose the seats that it looks like the government will win. Parramatta, Gilmore, Karangamite, Lyons, Blair, McEwen and Lingiari. And it's also worth bearing in mind that some of the seats where the government is facing a potential loss are to the independents, not to Labor. So you can see seven days out, it will be a close contest. It's neck and neck. It's not a certain victory for Labor as the polls are telling you and as the media commentators are telling you, even on this channel. A lot depends on where the 20% of soft voters, undecided voters in those marginals how they decide to cast their vote.